I am here in Southern Illinois at Rolling Lawn Farms, where the fourth generation of dairy farmers is transforming the way that they do business. We've been thinking about launching our own brand for 10 years, and I basically just got tired of talking about it and realized I needed to do it. I'm the fourth generation dairy farmer here at Rolling Lawns. Established 1910, my great-grandfather Samuel Smullinger started it, passed it on to my grandfather, and then my dad was the guy that took the farm from good to great, in my mind. My dad named the farm when he was 15 years old in 1952, and uh, that vision came to him when he was walking across the pastures from the one-room schoolhouse that he attended, and he dubbed it Rolling Lawns Farm, and so it's really important to me to continue that legacy that my dad started uh, a long time ago. Cows have the most beautiful, serene faces. There is something about being in the presence of a cow. I don't know, I love it whenever I am able to come to a farm like this. They're excited to see you, cat. <laughs> so all of these cows are due to have babies in the next four to eight weeks. You wanna see a baby? Yeah. Yeah, let's go look at some babies. Okay, I love the babies. Do you have kittens too? Yes, every farm, <laughs> every dairy farm's got kittens. Kittens and calves, it's like my ideal day. So this is the newest member of the family at Rolling Lawns, a little heifer calf. She probably weighs about 90 pounds and was born at 5.30 this morning. Wow. She is brand new and she's standing. Look how strong she is. She took her first steps at about uh, 30 minutes of age. That's incredible. It can never get old for you to see these new babies. Never gets old. <gasps> Hi, baby. You are just a few hours old, oh my gosh. The dairy industry has gone through an amazing amount of change in the last 50 years. In the 70s, there were 600,000 dairy farms. Today, there are 43,000 farms. So there's been a tremendous amount of consolidation. And uh, like many industries, this little guy goes away. It's all about scale. In a commodity market, you're a price taker, which is awfully dangerous. And in a cyclical market, in a volatile market like the dairy industry and milk, there are many years where you're going to operate at a loss. 2015 was a break-even year. 2016 is a net loss for most every dairy producer in the country. So we have to change our business strategy to uh, facilitate a revenue model that can be profitable. You have to get really creative if you want to compete with, uh, with the scale of uh, larger companies. Milk's traded on the market, and that has a tremendous amount of influence on how the dairyman's paid. And that market used to be a domestic, kind of a North American market, now it's very global. So we're subject to global influences, we're subject to tariffs, we're subject to a lot of political battles that uh, happen. So what we're trying to do is find a stable market for our milk and one that can be profitable. So Bingo will be eight in October. She's beautiful. But she's eating about 70, 80 pounds of feet a day and drinks about 40 to 45 gallons of water a day. Wow. That's kind of the diet of the dairy cow. That's incredible. Yeah, and then she's given about 110 pounds of milk a day.
when you come out here and you work with the animals, I mean, how connected do you feel to your, your father, your grandfather, your great-grandfather? This is what I was supposed to do. I'm absolutely positive this is what the Lord intended me to do. And uh, it took me a while to get back here. And uh, there's a lot of country music songs that talk about <laughs> the long winding road to where you're supposed to be. Yeah. And I certainly took mine. And it's like anything else, when you're a kid, you don't understand why it's important, yeah. what you're learning. But to apply it now, and carry on the legacy. Any farm family's got the same story and you don't want it to end on your watch. The decision to remain small is certainly a choice. It's the one we want to make and it's obviously very exciting to uh, try and control our own future and make our own market, but it's also uh, pretty frightening because it's kind of like quitting your job and just kind of stepping out there and looking for a new line of work or to, to take your art or craft to market and help people respond to it. It's so important for some producers, some farmers, to do what it is that you're doing. Yeah. Because it does create sustainability in the industry. There are some people who will always want to be part of the commodity market, right. but it's not sustainable for a number of farmers. And so I think that when people like you take these kinds of risks, it shows other folks what is possible and it helps lead the way. It's, it's an important step that you took. I appreciate that. For this family, I think we're, we're on the right approach, so uh, we'll see how it works out. So how did the partnership with Marcoot come about? Our families have known one another forever. They were interested in starting to expand on their operation and processing some other products, and it's a good partnership. It's two families working together. So Rolling Lawns is maybe 15 minutes away from Marcoot. That's where we're gonna go next to see your milk being bottled. Mm -hmm.